Hi and welcome to this tutorial of Fetus Writer. Um, Fetus Writer is an acad uh, academic editor and what we will try to do here now is to create a document and uh, use the citation manager to cite something in that document. Um, as any other web app, what you need to do first is create a login. Um, I assume you've already done that. I have. So the first thing is I uh, log in. And so my first view here is uh, my document overview. Right now there's nothing, so it's just blank. If I wanted to create something, I would uh, click on create new document. But first, what I want to do is I want to go to the bibliography and create something that I can cite then. Now in the bibliography, this is not a bibliography for just an individual document. This is usually, and just I upload everything that I usually cite in here. So if you are a, an, an academic or a student and you cite a lot of books, usually you have like all your favorite books in here, everything that's on your bookshelf you have in here. And so right now I have nothing. So I need to enter something. So to do that, I click on register new source. Um, now, here I have to select a source type. It gives me quite a lot of options. Um, what we've done is we've, we've, we've looked at the bibliography management systems that are out there and we've found one that's called Biblatech, which seems to be the most comprehensive one right now. And so we've just used exactly that structure that they have. So anything that you can find within Biblatech, you will be able to find here. So these are all the options they offer and so we offer them. So the most common one is an article, an academic article. Um, so if I want to cite this article, I need to insert some required fields and I can insert some optional fields. Now there's quite a lot of optional fields here. Um, and as an extra, I can assign this a category. This category is more, uh, more than anything for myself to organize my, my different citation sources. So what we will do in this case, just to do it quick, we just fill in the required fields. So first we need an author. And so we use Daniel Frabel. That's one of the Fetus Writer people. And um, if we want to have another author, or it's more than, more than two or three or any, any number of authors, we click on the plus here to create another field. And so, Now we have a second author and we can create a third one. So now we have three authors and um, we still need to fill out the other fields though. Um, publication date gives us six different fields. All the date fields will give us these six fields. Um, the first ones are clear, year, month and day. But there are two of them. Why is that? Well. Sometimes we don't quite know when something has been published. So say there's a book, it could have been published in 1896 or 97. So then we would fill out 1896 in the first field, 1897 in the second field. Or it could be between two dates. Then we would fill out all six of these. Like the first one would be the first possible date and the, uh, the second would be the last possible date. Um, obviously uh, not everything has a month and a day. So books usually just have a year. Uh, some journals have a month. Uh, newspaper articles usually have all three of them. But the most important thing is just to have some kind of, of uh, year. So we'll just add a year to this, 2008. A journal title. The scientific journal. Let's capitalize that. And we need an, a title for this uh, article that, that these three team members have written. So let's just call it um, Why Fittest Writer Will Change Everything. Okay, submit it. So now we can see here that in the, uh, in the overview of the bibliography, we have one item 
there would be more listed here if we had more but this one is called why fetus writer will change everything source type it's an article the author is daniel frabel and some others it was published in 2008 and here we would click if you wanted to delete it we could also select it if we had more we could select several of them and then we could either export all of them or we could del uh, delete all of them export is if you want to to export to uh, beep tech or other systems um now i go back to documents because now i have something i can cite so i will start my document create on uh, create new document um this is the editor it looks kind of similar to many other editors such as google docs but it's a bit different so first what i need to do is i need to enter a title uh, right now it's an untitled document as you can see so if i click here and i say um an essay for school that's my title if i click anywhere else it has updated the title up here as well so this is the name and the title of the document and so i click in the next box here which is the content so here I can write just like any article, I can, and like any text editor, I can write any text. Um, however, there are some differences. So uh, if I start writing my first paragraph, that's the very first paragraph. This is the first sentence, Fetus Writer does it differently. Um, nothing much special about that. But if you, if you compare to other uh, editors, usually what you can do is you can change the font size and you can change the font of this. Now, if you look at the document, uh, at, the, at the options here carefully, there is, n there is no way where you can do that. What you can do is you can specify whether this is normal text, whether this is a headline of a first, second or, or third degree, you can put in bold and italics, but you cannot change the, the you cannot change the um, the font size. Why is that? Well, because this is a semantic editor. What that means is that instead of specifying the styling of everything, you specify what something means. So right now, what we what we have specified is that this the meaning of this is normal text. It's a paragraph. It's just a normal the, the absolute most standard form and the most standard part of, of any written text is a paragraph. What's the advantage of this? The advantage is that we can afterwards, we can export it to any other uh, type of document or, or, you know, we can print it, we can put it on an e-reader or anything and it always knows that this is this is a paragraph and so we can apply different styling depending on that so we can for example say like oh well if it's on an e-reader make all the paragraph uh, text in that and that style if we wanted to have it on a website then put the paragraph in that and that style that way uh, we only have to enter the text once and we don't have to think about the changing the styling afterwards just because we have a different output format um, we can also see that here. So if we click on document style, we can actually change what it looks like for us here. So if we click on classic is the, the one that's been chosen already. So if we click on modern, it makes it look a bit different. If you look, uh, click on funky, it makes it look quite a bit different, but all the elements are still the same. Now the computer could do that because it knew that this up here is the title and this down here is a paragraph. So it knew how it could restyle this um, without having to ask us anything. So that's, that's the advantage of that. Now, um, the next thing we will look at is this citation that we have been, um, that we have been um, starting already. So this second sentence, Fetus Writer does it differently. Well, we want to cite something on that. And conveniently, uh, we already entered something in our bibliography uh, collection so we want to cite that so I, I enter a little space there and then I want to add this citation so I click here on this on this one this it says cite and so I get I cite as a, a, a citation configuration dialog now here I can choose between all the different works that I have um, that I have in my bibliography uh, database right now it's only one why fetus writer will change everything. 
And so I could say that within this article, I want to, at this particular spot, I want to cite page number 12, for example. And so I insert that. And so now it says, um, Vitov, 2008, page 12. Um, it's referring to that book. And so if I scroll a bit down, it also has, and it has given me a bibliography where it says Vitov, 2008, Wi-Fi divider will change everything. Now, this is one way of styling the citation, but there are many other ways. And there are these standards, there's so-called citation styles. So here, the, because we know it's a citation and the computer has it all semantically made up, what we can do is we can change the citation style. So instead of using the uh, American Psychological Association style, we can use the style that's called Harvard, for example. And so now we see that it makes it look quite differently. You now it says, Daniel Ferber and Takuto Kohime and Anne Vito of 2008, page 12. And if we look down at the bibliography, it also gives us kind of a, a pretty different information down here. Um, we could even click here on a footnote style. So instead, now it just gives us a footnote. And if we scroll down, we'll notice that, yes, indeed, it gives us a footnote that uh, refers, that has the information in it to uh, for for the uh, for the citation, um, if I click, if I change it back to ARPA or, or any of the others, if I uh, I can also take Chicago MLA. Now all of these are really uh, they, they they're just demonstrations. So don't use this to figure out what ARPA style is supposed to look like because this is to be honest, it's not what it's supposed to look like. And we will, we will have to spend some time to make sure that these citation styles actually match uh, what, we, what we name them in here. So we could click back on that and change it to something else. We could also say something before. So say we could say C for example update. So now it has it in the, in the parentheses. C for example, we took uh, page 12. Okay, so that's one part, citation. Another another uh, feature that we have here is comments, which is uh, it's quite similar to what they have in Google Docs. So um, we can add a comment here. Then we can someone else could answer this comment. Um, and so on. That's pretty similar to Google Docs. Now, uh, Google Docs is really good if you want to collaborate with other people writing a text. However, if you are an academic, what you usually want, want to ensure is that you have, you as the official author of the text, you want to have complete control of what's actually going into the text. And you don't always have that with Google Docs. So you can invite other people to be able to edit your text, but then they actually can change stuff. And so, you may want them to propose changes, but not actually to be able to change that. And so that's what we put in here. So um, the, op the, the option to do that is called track changes. It's actually something that you can also enable in, uh, in a number of, of desktop uh, publishing programs, but the problem is that they are not online. So here, if I click on changes, it currently says, Changes are shown, but they're not tracked because there's no black behind the track. Um, if you are the document owner and the person who creates a document is always automatically the document owner, changes are not tracked. You can enable it, and that's what we will do now, but they're not tracked automatically. However, if a document has been shared with you, and so you are just somebody who's contributing to someone else's document, they're automatically tracked and you cannot turn that off. So the, the original document uh, owner will be able to see what you've changed to it and will be able to say, uh, say whether or not he actually likes those changes and, and, and can say no. So let's click on track changes. So now changes are tracked. And so if I right now, um,
um, you can see it's writing with uh, not with black but with a, a sort of turquoise color now this the color here depends on the user so for the first one for the first user using track changes will use this color if there were more than 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 one user then it would give a different color automatically to the second user and a different one again to the third user and so on um now uh, if i click on change changes and uh, turn off the show it's showing it all in black so now it just looks as if it has been it's part of the main uh, body text but if i turn it on to show now it shows me that okay this is not this is a a, a a change that has been tracked and that still needs approval um now only the document owner can approve uh, changes obviously so what that document the owner does is he clicks on it and we have this little window appearing and it asks me whether i want to accept or reject the change and so if i click accept the change Ta-da! Now it's part of the of the overall body text, and so there we go. Um, yes, so this has been a very first look at Fidus Writer. Uh, it's still being developed, but I hope that that uh, some of you out there will in will enjoy this and will uh, come back, try it out. It's it's an open beta, and uh, give us some give us some ideas about what more you think needs to be done to this. For this to really be working for you. Thank you very much and goodbye.